Hello and a very good morning to you. The American space agency NASA is waiting for a signal from its New Horizons probe, which has aimed to fly past the most distant object ever explored in our solar system. The robotic craft was due to fly past a huge body of ice and dust called Ultima Thule. But it's some six and a half billion kilometers from Earth, so it will take more than six hours for New Horizons to, uh, to get a radio message and any pictures back home. Here's our science correspondent, Jonathan Amos. Far beyond the big planets like Saturn and Neptune, far beyond even the dwarf planet Pluto, the New Horizons spacecraft has been chasing down a mysterious icy world known as Ultima Thule. Three, two, one, go New Horizons! Go New Horizons! And at just after 5.30 GMT this morning, the probe should have whipped by its target, flashing its cameras and gathering all sorts of scientific data. Researchers believe the deep-frozen 30-kilometre-wide object can tell them new things about how the solar system formed 4.6 billion years ago. Ultima appeared as a tiny blob in the pictures taken on approach. The new ones, when they arrive, should be very detailed. But patience is required. The vast distance radio signals must travel to get home mean the images will take fully 20 months to download. The great thing about such a slow data transmission rate is that it's almost a gift that keeps on giving. Every week or so we'll get new images back from the spacecraft and we're going to learn new things for the next two years uh, out through most of 2020 of what Ultima Thule looks like, looked like during the New Horizons flyby. New Horizons will continue to push deeper and deeper into space. With plenty of fuel and power, scientists say it could keep working until the 2030s. By that stage, it could be leaving the solar system on its way to nearby stars. Jonathan Amos, BBC News. So where exactly is the lump of ice and dust known as Ultima Thule? Our science editor, David Shookman, has this explanation. To explain what this mission is all about, let's use our virtual studio and start with the middle of our solar system. Now, orbiting closest to the sun are the four small rocky planets, including Earth. Then, further out, there are four much larger planets. The best known of these is Saturn with its famous rings. And then right on the margin, there's tiny Pluto, three billion miles away. But it turns out that Pluto is just one part of a massive outer zone we only started discovering in the last 20 years or so. Thousands of tiny worlds and lumps of rock and ice known as the Kuiper Belt. These are objects left over after the planets were formed. One of these is known as Ultima Thule, and until now we've only had this artist's impression of it. But after racing from Earth on a 13-year journey, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, the most distant exploration in human history. Well, with such vast distances involved, it will be a real breakthrough for space research if images from the New Horizons probe do reveal new data about the outer reaches of our solar system, as Do Dr. Robert Massey from the Royal Astronomical Society explained to me earlier. This is the most distant target we've ever sent a space probe to. Um, and New Horizons has been on an incredible journey already. It went to Jupiter about a year after launch. It went past Pluto a couple of years ago, sent past some really amazing pictures of that system. And, you know, it hopefully went past uh, Ultima Thule this morning successfully. Uh, but as your report said, it takes six hours for light and radio waves to travel back from a, a target that distance. So we won't know if it's been successful till later. And, uh, you know, it'll take a long time for all the images to come back. But that said, we should start to see those pictures fairly soon later on today, at least the first first few. Uh, I've seen Ultima Thule described as a frozen piece of cosmic history. So what can we expect? What can we hope to learn from this fly past? I, I, I mean, there will be surprises. You know, no one's seen anything like this. But it's an object in what's called the Kuiper Belt, which is a, a region of comet-like objects, nuclei, probably quite dark rocky things right at icy rocky things right out beyond the orbit of neptune and it's it's an example of one of those so the, the thing about these objects is they're a long way from the sun they're less affected by the heat of the sun for that reason so that they're, they're in a sense much more pristine than objects like the earth venus mars or the worlds closer in and that's that's really intriguing 
Uh, it may also be that it's weirdly smooth because there's this, for example, a paper predicting that impacts with objects this far out are a bit slower than you'd find closer in. So it may be that, you know, we're seeing this sort of mass of material that's been bundled together by gravity and it's all, all smooth. We, but we just don't know until the pictures come back. Um, it was spotted by Hubble, wasn't it, Ultima Thule? And was it the most distant object picked up by Hubble? Is that the reason why this mission is, is, has been headed towards it for, for quite a few years now? No, I mean, there are, there are much more distant objects, and actually there are examples of objects, although we, could, we wouldn't easily be able to detect them. We're pretty sure there are things way, way out. Um, there are, you know, there are, there's the Oort cloud of cometary nuclei, which is getting on for a light year away from the Earth, so a vast distance, and it's, it's much closer in than that. No, the reason for sending the probe in this direction was simply that it was a target that could be reached. Um, when uh, New Horizons was launched, we didn't know about it, but there was always that idea in mind that go past Pluto and see what's beyond there. So it was, it was handy that this was discovered, that it was a target that was achievable. I mean, that said, there's no reason once it's gone past that, they couldn't look for other targets, at least for distant imaging, and there's some ideas about that as well. But, you know, although... There are lots of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of these things out there. Uh, space is very big, so there's absolutely no guarantee that you'll have one that's reachable. But it, we were lucky that this was found and it was something New Horizons could head for. And let's talk a bit more about the technology on board New Horizons. It was launched in 2006. Obviously, there are huge advancements in the technology uh, all the time. But, you know, if this was being launched today, would the technology essentially be very different? I, I mean, you're still talking, you know, some of the imaging technology would be better. Uh, you'd still be talking about the same kind of systems to power the spacecraft, what's called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which is basically a piece of decaying plutonium that powers it. The reason you have to do that is that it's so far from the sun that solar panels aren't going to be much use. And you're still using radio signals. So, so many of the basics would still be in place, but it is fair to say that certainly the imaging technology is improving a lot, and as well as our ability to process those images when they get back to the Earth. But you know, we're talking about something which is at the very edge of the solar system. Uh, when you've got you know, the power of a, of a large light bulb powering a spacecraft, sending a signal back to Earth, uh, you have to do some pretty ingenious things. Uh, the, the fundamental principles of spacecraft and sending them into space still apply, but we do get better and better pictures and better results all the time. And just finally, briefly, you mentioned that we should get or should expect hopefully the first information, those first images back later today. Roughly what time? Uh, I think it's a press conference uh, scheduled for later this afternoon, 3.30, 4 o'clock our time, something like that. You know, and it would be really great to at least see one or two of the first images then, so fingers crossed. And if not, we just have to, well, or even if they're there, actually, we then have to wait, watch over the next 20 months or so for the rest of the data to come back. Dr. Robert Massey from the Royal Astronomical Society.